Hey guys, this is Dan with Gears and Gadgets. Thanks for tuning in. So I'm coming to you guys with another Harley Davidson Find Your Freedom intern, and this one is Wei Dong Han. He is uh, from China, from Wuhan, and uh, is now in the Philippines. And it, coordinating this interview took a, a lot of work to uh, sync up schedules, but. I am incredibly happy that we did because uh, he really is a fantastic guy. He posted some of the most incredible, incredible traveling Instagram posts that I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, he really is a, a, just an amazing traveler. I highly suggest you go check out his Instagram. I will link that in the description down below. Uh, again, Adventurer Han, really just a fantastic guy, and I would recommend you watch this all the way through because uh, he has a lot of great things to say. So with that being said, I'll go ahead and I'll just jump right into it. Hey, my name is Wei Dong Han. I am from Wuhan, China. In 2018, a couple of years ago, when I was um, just graduated from University of Dayton, I worked for Harley as one of the uh, financial freedom interns. You were, when you found this this program, you were at college in uh, Dayton, Ohio? Yes, I was... Um, so when I found this program, so it's funny. So I, I, I used to be in the powerlifting team. So in that day, we were having a competition for powerlifting. So right after the competition, I went back home. I tried to relax. Uh, usually we'll have a big party afternoon. But I, like right after one of my teammates showed me an email about this internship, it described every single thing that I've been literally doing for the past few summers when I was in, in, in the United States. I gathered all my videos, all my content that I shoot over the, over the past few years and then made like this video um, because Hardy wanted to us to explain what this freedom means to us. So I tried to do what I can to, you know, just go gather all my videos from 2014, 2013, uh, 15, 16, my multiple cross country road trip. So I got it, got them together. I, I edited this video. I sent them over, um, like right before I graduated and, 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 you know, just hope for the best and, and see the two days. Cause we had this tradition is called Dayton to Daytona. Everybody, entire senior class, we, we went down to Daytona beach. I mean, it's like graduation party. And like one day after the party's over on the way, I was, I was actually riding my motorcycle, rolling my motorcycle all the way down from Dayton to Daytona. And I got this phone call. Cause I look at my phone, it's from Milwaukee. I was like, holy shit. So I got to stop by. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I stopped. I stopped. I stopped by. I, I was on the highway, so I stopped. I, I stopped over. I called him back. I was like, "Hey, I'm I'm on my motorcycle. Is it okay if you can call me within like 30 minutes?" And they said it's okay. So after 30 minutes, I found I found the subway. I sat over there, just waiting for the for the phone call. So I got a phone call with the HR. Uh, they set a meeting with me in the two days. Um, um, that was pretty much it. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. And, and so you're obviously I, I saw your Instagram posts and everything from before when you were uh, before the internship, and uh, y you did some serious adventure riding. Obviously, the whole name Adventure Han is 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 yeah. uh, for for a reason. Uh, you, did you ride up to Alaska? Because I saw you had a picture of yourself. Uh, with that, uh, yeah, it was back into in the uh, wild 2016. Bus. Yeah, it was back in 2016. So the whole reason I got into adventure riding because at, at the beginning, my first motorcycle ever was the uh, mod, uh, the uh, BMW 800 ST, which is a, a road bike. It's like a roadster bike, um, sport tour touring. That's what I call it. Back in 2013, that was the first summer ever I was in the U.S. So I, I did a driving. I did a driving road trip in my car and all the way from uh, Ohio to the coast, uh, West Coast, and then down to Miami, back to Ohio. Uh, during that trip, I've seen a lot of motorcycles on the road. I was like, you know, next time I'm going to do I'm going to do a motorcycle. But before then, like in 2014, uh, before that, I've never even touched a motorcycle. Because back in the city in China, motorcycles has pretty much been banned. And also, my parents wasn't a big sporter, but... When I got in the U.S., I was, you know, I was about 10,000 miles away from my parents. I was like, what the heck? I'm just going to get a motorcycle. In, in Asia, the, like the motorcycles or the scooters, there's really not motorcycles. It's 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 just a lot of scooters. And it is it is chaos, absolute chaos. And I don't know how people aren't just killed every two seconds. It's like I, it, it stresses me out to see it. I'm like, wow, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. So this is what happened in China right now. So right now, after 20 years, they're trying to get rid of this uh, most of the electric uh, scooter. And then 
promoting more like a slower electric uh, uh, bicycle. So they, they don't go over 20 miles per, uh, per hour. And also slowly bring back motorcycle that has to be like qualified motorcycle, like a real ones. If in the future, a few years in the future, if I ever go back to China and live there, I'll, I'll definitely got one. I'll definitely got one for myself as well. So you would you would ride in China? You would you would ride a bike in China? Oh, totally, totally, totally. I mean, yeah. I was out. I, so I, I say this. So um, you know, my experience uh, in it was in uh, Tianjin and in, in Beijing, and uh, in the city centers themselves, I would never touch a bike. It, it would just. It seems like. It'd be, it's so so dangerous, but there is plenty of of countryside, and I think that I think that if there's one thing that that Americans don't probably totally re- understand is that China isn't just all one big massive city center. Like there is a ton of countryside that you could go out and ride in, in beautiful beautiful areas that you could you could explore. You know, it's about two thirds of China is covered by um, um, mountains, forest, and, and, and desert. That's right. place. That's most people. That's less, way less, unpopular people. That's like a big wild west. It's almost the same thing because we have those kind of like sort mountains, um, forests with deserts as well. That's about two thirds of China. It's, it's for exploration. It's for like what I what, what I used to do back in the U.S. and Canada. So, a couple questions I have for you. Number one is, does Harley even have a presence? in asia anywhere like do they sell i know you don't see like a road glide cruising through beijing anytime soon but do they have sales in china oh yeah they are there there is actually a a dealership actually in wuhan and then there's coming another dealership in wuhan there's two dealerships in shanghai and dealerships in beijing oh major major cities in china they all have hard dealerships and um, I've seen people. They have Harley clubs. They have Harley rallies and everything like that. It just, it just they don't promote that much. So most people that buy, purchase a Harley Davidson, in China is more they really love motorcycle. Right. So much that they would pay twice the price that people would pay in in the U.S. because the turf is about 100 percent for for the motorcycle um, you know imports to China. Think about it. what if you pay like twice the price for your exactly same bike. And, and and having this riding restriction within the city, and right. if you if you don't love motorcycle, nobody would do that. It's just like it doesn't make sense at all. So I have actually uh, um, talked to a lot of people um, who's only motorcycles in China. Um, they're like really great guys. They're like same thing. There is having almost having the same vibe with the Harley riders. Uh, what I met in, in back in the U.S. Yeah, so you know, hopefully, in a, in a few years, I will join the club as myself as well. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's something that would be that would be awesome, and and I think Harley should promote that and bring you back on board. Honestly, Harley should get you a Pan America as the day that it comes out and put you on that bike and have you riding that thing. I mean, I, just seeing the stuff that you that you, that you post on Instagram, it, it would be foolish for for Harley not to be reaching out to you to give you a Pan America immediately. So now that you're, did you you graduated college and you went you're at the Philippines now? You said, yeah. So the year 2018, I graduated and and I worked for Harley over the summer a little bit, and then um, after that, I tried to actually we did we, I did a phone call interview with the HR. Um, and also with my job performance, I, you know, I, I was confident that I would be able to stay there, um, you know, for the program because I was really interested because I'm a marketing person, a major in marketing. I, I was really interested in their marketing program on the Ignite, uh, what they call the Ignite program is for a young graduate and to um, work for the company for three years and m- multiple departments, multiple projects, and eventually become a, 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 a junior management. So that was that was my hope, but uh, they 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 shut me down. I well at this point because the uh, they have policy about not not hiring well not hiring foreigner because I I was on student visa, so they don't they don't offer a working visa, so that's the point. And they call me back and it's like uh, we we can't take you because our company policy is uh, we don't offer a working visa. That's that's that's. Strange to me, I believe you, um, but I'm shocked to hear a company the size of Harley Davidson that has a presence in China, a presence in Thailand. Uh, they're, they're they're intentionally trying to grow their brand uh, internationally. That they wouldn't 
um, not only offer that, but go out of their way, <laughs> go out of their way to offer it. So you're the first person that I've talked to to say that they that there was actually talk about bringing you on or em- employment afterwards. Um, and it's really a bummer. I'm sorry that didn't work out because I think that you would have been a perfect fit for them. So because because well, all I think because the the, the the whole find the freedom, all they want to do is trying to do, ask us what can Holly do to bring up interest and to bring up awareness in the young people. And I gave them a bunch of them, but I, I feel bumped up because not 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 if not because they are they're trying to run in the things that are trying to run in my ideas and stuff. I you know I'm, I'm glad they're trying to they listen to me. They try to do that, but I feel bumped is I didn't get a chance to run this program. I didn't get a chance to do that. I didn't get a chance to contribute with it. I don't care if somebody else taking the credit or something like that. All I care. As I really care about this industry. I really care about like motorcycle riding, and that's that's all I care. Because I'm not, even though I'm in marketing, I'm not a salesman. I don't sell product. What I do is I try to promote. I try to sell the lifestyle. Like I try to, because I know this is gold. This is good. I've been doing this every summer, and I want I want everybody. I want every a lot of people having the chance, have an opportunity to do that as well. So that's my hope. I want to do that. That's my passion. I don't care if somebody else is taking the credit. I just want to run this program. I just want to run it good. That was, that's, that was my that was my dream. That was my hope. I'm very passionate right now. I'm I'm 37, so I'm not I'm not a college guy. I'm I'm right in the middle of. Uh, I understand where the old guys are coming from, but I absolutely see how Harley is not connecting with the young people at all, and. A lot of what's going on right now is Harley's not even in front of young people. I mean, and like you are familiar with motorcycles because you're riding all those things, so you're you kind of get it. But your average American, I'm talking about here, that's 18 to 20 years old, if their father wasn't riding a Harley, they know nothing about it. And Harley is all of their dealerships, from my experience, are out in the middle of the suburbs. I don't know why Harley doesn't have pop up shops near college campuses that they don't have CVOs in. They don't need to have a, a, a street glide. The most expensive bike should be $14,000 sitting in that in that showroom where college kids are, are actually hanging out and might come in there and go, oh, you know what? I never thought about it, but I want, I want a bike. It, you have to be there. If you're not there, nobody's going to pay attention to anything. Exactly. That's why I say if Harley having more school to join with the riding academy, they opened up a course inside the campus. They yep. could they could have in their Harley truck to every single campus, like a you know, national national tour to every single campus and bring up the wellness. People will see it. Because yep. right now, for young people thinking something cool is not back in the nineties, back in the eighties, like motorcycle, you know, rock kind of a cool but anymore. It's 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 different kind of cool. You know, yep. it's, it's, you have to be um, catching up their trend. And the first of all, the price has to be lower. Because it's, it's, I was thinking, because Hardy was like, we're trying to bring this young, and high, new, high technology about motorcycles. So we bring LifeWire uh, to the public. And the LifeWire price, guess what? It's like 30K. <laughs> That's like one of the most motorcycles. That's even even higher than Street Glide, Road Glide. That's almost yep. the level with the uh, Evo. Because, uh, like, what kind of, like, I, I can't. Imagine, because because it's different. If if it's in China, oh, there's gonna be young people buying it because because there's what we call a second generation of rich in China. Because their, their parents are so rich, and there is only child, and they got all the money to spend. So if you if you go to Phoenix and stuff, you see like Chinese students, uh, 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 they're really a community. Uh, dude, you will see they have fanciest car around. Absol- in the absolutely. Cause, cause their their parents are fucking rich, man. Cause that's why that's why they're spending their money here. And then and then and the life wire would be a huge success if they put it put a life wire in China, you know. But but in America, people have different perspective. People have different thinking of of, of of you know spending money here, and especially not for young kids. They wouldn't they wouldn't have any money at all. Like a three thousand yeah. bike would be impossible for them to get. I think that, that's you know, that's not something like that. I think the live wire is great for Harley Davidson to show that they can do it but it also exposes yes, it also exposes a big problem they're gun shy they don't want it. I think they could sell that motorcycle for $20,000 
all day long, but they don't want to because I think they're they worry about their image, which is very valuable. I understand that their image is very important. Their biggest biggest problem with the live wire would be if they sold it at twenty thousand dollars and they sold a hundred thousand of those tomorrow. And then all of a sudden they found out the batteries were bad or the bikes caught on fire or the mechanics couldn't figure out how to fix them. They can't they don't have the parts for them because they they haven't they haven't been doing it for years. So they have to ramp all that stuff up. I think they intentionally set that bike at thirty thousand dollars so that they didn't sell a lot of them. But in the process, now the narrative is that the bike is too expensive and it was stupid. So it's. It was just a bad execution on 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 the entire thing, um, in my opinion. But also, and also, talk about the image. Um, during the time when I was working for Harley, they really tr- they re- they're doing really hard to try to get rid of um, uh, like a very hardcore Harley image to a younger generation. You know, you know those image like like people riding motorcycle like hooligans. It's like yeah. you know badass bike with loud pipes tattoo everywhere and then and then those those kind of image they really want to try to get rid of those image you know like a bike gangs kind of image and then bring up uh, a more friendly image and that was that was what i've been you know talking when i when i was working for harley but uh so during my um so as brock was there like back into um back into august and everybody come back and just kind of like showcase what have you learned through this internship uh my idea of it so here's the thing here's the thing about uh they re- they really try to really they, they try really hard to get over this image but they still doing the promotion that in a very cute way when i was in south carolina riding back to dayton on, on side of the highway on the broadway uh, on, on the side of the highway, there was a there was a um, there was a billboard. There's a Hardy motorcycle dealership billboard, and then <laughs> what surprised me it was it was it was with Hardy logo, and it was a handlebar with a ha- with a hand and hand tattoo says uh, "Ride Hard." <laughs> that was that was the billboard. That was the billboard show. Like think about this. Okay, think of even if the young people think Hardy is attractive, Hardy. Is something cool. Uh, they want to buy it. Let's say if the, if a guy, a college guy, let's say 21 years old, with, with the parents driving through the highway, I see the billboard, and he was like, "Hey, dad, I want to buy a motorcycle." Like buy this billboard? Never gonna happen <laughs> in a million years. Dude, I'm a tattoo guy, but that's that image is not family friendly. Do you, do you know what would be a better uh, promotion instead of like ride hard? They could do like tattoo says ride safe. I would I would think yeah. with that. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and that's that's actually an interesting way because that was kind of where I was going to go with that is that, you know, I have nothing against, you know, the the badass biker image. Um, you know, I think it's cool. I got no, I, I see these guys out there. I've talked to a bunch of these guys, and so those people I have actually contact with a lot during my internship. I love those people. Like they're nice guys. They yep. look like badass, but they're really nice guys. We have great com- uh, conversations. And, and we had like I've been to Sturgis twice. My like you know first time was by myself. I I was riding. I was I was really young. Like I was scared because I, I I'm a Chinese. You know I don't know if I ever run into somebody racist. It's right. like but still I went there. I talked to people like that. I, I had a great time. I had great time with with people with like hot pole riding, party rider. And there was there was nothing. We were friends. We were drinking beers. We just we listened to the concert. We listened to music. We have really great you know conversation. We ride together. And it was great. But the thing is, when you're thinking about public promotion on your product, that's something. And also you have because because you have also you have to look into what's your target market. If my target market is young people, those image you wouldn't be, wouldn't be promotional for for the for the for the uh, for the young people. Those they wouldn't because because first off, financially their parents will never agree, and eventually when they ended up, let's say if they're in other twenties, they want to buy the bike, they don't have the money, and their parents don't agree. But eventually when they got in the thirties, they have the money, but they have the family, and also there will be some other thing that yep. that slow them down to purchase their bike. So it is a very bad circle. So this is something is um, inevitable, like globally. And it's not just about Harley. It's also like in car industry, 
also in in in, in phone industry because older generation they have a hard time to catch up the trend not like younger generation like a three years different thing three years different fashion so it's 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 for Harley as a company that's like one of the best motorcycle company they really need working on how to catch up the trend with the young people like like yeah yeah we still have our old tradition but yes we also have our new school like new product and lower the price for catch up the young train but if you like our you know old tradition old stuff old style they still have they still have this you know very thick base of a uh, 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 motorcycle thing but also i i really want i, I so here's something like i i it's something i think Harley should working on hard is to Right, right now, they become very, very conservative of their product, but they kind of like forgot what is the core concept, what is the core value. If you look back right now, people have a different concept of what what is cool, what is freedom, than they have the concept in the 80s or back in the 50s, 60s. It, it's, it's different. So right now, the people, like especially for young guy, we have like the better promotion for them is um, is for motorcycle uh, promotion with um, you know trips with like road trip with um, you know with friendship bonding and also even if you want to promote urban life that could that could be even better because try to do something um, on you know high tech but low price so it's not it's not the millennials killing the motorcycle or killing Harley Davidson it's the millennials our generation is living in a different world yes rather than the generation before us is we're living in a different world so i really hope that Harley could harley harley davidson they would they could see that they could do something change in their social media ends you know like trying to catch up the trend that said tiktok is really popular right now among teenagers so think about something that you could post on tiktok that will attract people we don't think because at least i don't think um, making you know driving motorcycle with the cops or like making the donuts on the ground that's not cool anymore right. like that's, i agree that's public you know that's public damage it's not cool anymore what what we, what we really want to bring up is the positive energy it's like a, yep. like a, some I, I know a lot of bike gangs like in the u.s they do they do charity that's really great they do like a domestic violence they against domestic violence things that that's really great that's i totally agree even though they, they look up really badass it's yeah. okay but people really want to show the good image of riding motorcycle to make this brand more family friendly what i say what i think the biggest problem hardy has also is one of the biggest problems that hardy has is, is the, the lack of diversity you know because we're like, right now we live in a world that has so many diversity different races different gender um, uh, different cultures all combined together, especially in the United States, like if as an immigrant country, like you guys have almost every single race, every single culture around the world that's, that's combined in the United States. So why not throw the same idea on, on, on the motorcycle? Because at, at the beginning, when I have in the motorcycle, I didn't like Harley before. I like sporty, sporty look, you know, something more, something more cool amongst my, my peer, among my right. generation. And then I got into... I got into uh, adventure riding is because I, I I did adventure riding, and that was something I wanted to chase for the rest of my life. So I I, I bumped into from sporty to ATV, uh, AD, ADV, like something like that. And then Harley, it was because this this internship was really cool and it got it gave me the chance to get into um, more closer with Harley, this cultural this thing. But but here's something like um, Matt Lavich, so the, the former CEO asking me the question about what do you think about bmw or harley like what what kind of bike are you call call you right now so i was asking me if i prefer the bmw motorcycle or harley so here's the answer so for doing that what i say is bmw is like my mom because i was like as a rider i was born under the bmw motorcycle and that culture but harley is like my mother-in-law <laughs> I work for Harley Davidson. I really want to do really, really good things for Harley Davidson. You know, I, I genuinely want, want wants wants the best best for her. So, 
that's that's my comparison between the two brands for me. Like, and that's what you told. That's what you told Matt Levitich. Levitich. That's, what <laughs> <laughs> that's what I talked to. That's what that's what I talked to during the uh, briefing, like marketing briefing. I talked to everybody. Like you know, if they ask me a question like that. You know, I have to give a general, like a like a general answer, like which is a good answer. Uh, yeah, answer, I, I think. And, and that's something that I think another another critique I have on Harley is that I think that they. Um, they they don't get enough of of honest answers and in in my opinion, um, it comes across on their social media campaigns and you're you're in marketing so I think you'll kind of get where I'm going with this but uh, I was watching a video on Harley it was on YouTube and it was a yeah. a video about Willie G his whole story and it's fascinating it's a, you know old Harley blood and his whole story about Harley Davidson and they the video I was watching this and as I was watching the video I'm like. This is what they need to be doing is telling the story of the brand and then let people receive it and and leave it alone. But at the very end of the video, it goes, uh, you know, for more, go over to Harley Davidson backslash media or something. And I'm like, they're trying to take people's eyes off of YouTube and put it onto their Harley Davidson website. And I'm like, what are you doing? I mean, if you if you know the YouTube algorithm. You want to keep eyes on YouTube as long as possible because then your video then gets promoted more because people are staying on YouTube. The moment you send them somewhere else, YouTube no longer cares about your video because you're sending them off of YouTube. Exactly. And and Harley Davidson, I I don't want to be the spoiler here, but you're not going to beat YouTube. (laughs) You're not going to create your own new thing that people now (laughs) – Harley Davidson's media web uh, page is up here and then YouTube is is number two below it. It ain't going to happen. Just stay on YouTube. That's not even the same industry. Like there's no uh, vi- like there's no vital comparison between those two companies. Uh, you can't compare. Like you, you do your own media, but YouTube is like you use YouTube as a platform to yes. promote your things, not like – Okay, here's my media website. So you want to check more <laughs> video? Go check on my website. That's not gonna happen. Yeah, and, and that's where I'm like, you know. So I, I kind of watched that, and I was bummed out because I'm like, what a great video. And then I saw the end of it is like, oh, they're just trying to get people over to their website to watch more of their videos. And millennials aren't gonna fall for that. They're not gonna go over and start watching Harley Davidson's website video. It just, it's it's just bad execution. Um, and in, in my opinion. You start watching some of the other videos on YouTube from Harley Davidson, and I'm like, there is not a single 20 year old kid who's going to watch a a Harley Davidson produced five or six minute commercial about a motorcycle. They want to see my channel, these other YouTubers who are way bigger than I am. They want to see those guys going out riding their motorcycles and talking about things that they hate about the bike. Like, hey, I, I don't like this thing. Or, hey, I wish they did this differently because it's organic. It's real. People want real these days. They don't want corporate produced uh, commercials. They just don't want it. So I, I just feel like Harley's trying so hard to fight what the world is today of just start supporting some of these content creators who have done the work to gain the audience and their audience trusts them and start using that to your advantage as opposed to trying to create your own thing uh, that might be trying to be better than what everybody else is already doing. It just doesn't make sense to me. I think they have this pride for being the best in their field. But also, if you want to be like a successful company, you think about your roots. It's not just about pride, and also it's about humble. It's about discipline. Yes. It's about cooperation with other. Because because media is not your it's not your brand. It's not your thing. So you're using some other brand to do the media heads. All you you gotta do is to do do your best to make the good motorcycle, to make the most profitable and make the most like efficiency way, and, and I mean financial efficiency. And also, and also, good brand, just good promotion and like behind the cultural. But the rest of them, it's not your thing. Just, just leave it alone. Because you can't do everything all together. It's not just about social media. And also, they try to really hard to promote their website for uh, gear purchasing. But right now, people have in so many ways. They have Amazons. They have uh, all sorts of kind of website for motorcycle gears and and and, and upgrades. So if you like only want to promote your website is is heavily 
waste of a lot of money because the website needs people to run, the website needs people to 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 maintain. Then that's that's something you can get rid of and just 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 you know put your stuff um through some other platform like you know Amazon's on or, or you know, not not eBay but Amazon's or or some other um, um, motorcycle gear website. Yeah, and, and I have no problem with them producing very heavily produced videos about their their history and telling their story I think that 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 is their story to tell that's good and and, and I think that it, it it's it's important but to uh, some of these these videos like you you can watch um, are just brutal where you're like you know you can't just I've seen some videos that they put out of like groups of guys riding like younger millennials riding around mountains and stuff like having fun camping and all this stuff. And it's like, that is too much of a commercial. Go back to just telling your story about Harley Davidson and let there's, there's probably uh, 500 people on YouTube right now that are already telling that story real actual videos of them taking their bikes out and, and camping and doing all those things. Start promoting those because those are the people that are actually going to drive the brand further. You taking your bike and, and going out and doing all these awesome uh, you know, journeys and posting on Instagram, those are the things that some 20-year-old kid might see your thing and go, I need to do that. That's awesome. Whether it's on a GS or a, a road glide, uh, who knows? But um, you know, those are the things that are important um, to the success of the the whole industry. I totally agree. I totally agree. And as as I think Harley should like as I say, like if they can, you know, launch the program, bring it to campus and also hosting um motorcycle getaway over the weekend, over the spring break, and then and then having ten or twenty students in together and just you don't even need to give them like the top of line motorcycle. They they would right. they could ride in the ten years old sport glide or sportster they still will be super happy over the few days. I really hope I really hope they can turn this around. You know, it's, it's just because motorcycle is going to be, even though I'm not riding at, uh, right now, um, motorcycle is going to be a huge, still going to be a huge part of my life. It's, it's not just, it's, it's not just, I don't think I, when I ride it, I don't think it's, I, won't, I don't want to show people that's cool. I, will, I don't want to show off, but it just, it, it's just part of my life. It's just my yeah, second life. I, I would like to say that. Yeah. So, 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 I'm, I'm assuming you sold your Spork Glide unit, transferred transfer it over to the Philippines with you, and ship it overseas. I, I had right? to. Yeah, I, yeah, I had ob- to. Obviously, it just, it just when I leave in the country, um, otherwise I would become a illegal immigrant, which is I, I, <laughs> which is I, I, I don't want. <laughs> which is I don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah, I love yeah, the yeah. country no, so much. I just, you know, I want to do the best for him. Um, so I saw my, saw my, but I still have my GS. I gave it to one of my best, my best friend, best buddy in, in the States. Um, so hopefully, because the GS has so many value for me, like so many like memories. I, I've been right. cross country multiple times. I like, that's the thing that bring me into the desert and bring me back. And just, I almost died so many times out there. Um, <laughs> But you know, yeah, literally, dude. If you, if you, I, I didn't post too much, but a lot, a lot of my videos, a lot of my uh, pictures that I took, it was, it was, it was like, like almost dead. Like you know, I, it was, there's one time I almost fell down from a cliff. There's one time I almost like you know got stuck in the desert, and and, and so many stories. And I, it just having this value to me that, that that I can't sell it. I can't sell it just for a few thousand gray. Yeah, no, I, so I, I understand. I gave my body. Yeah, hopefully, yeah, my body can take care of her. Um, uh, hopefully, eventually, someday I will ever get back to the states, and I will try to do something to do do what I can to ship it back uh, to China, just to the store. I know, I know, I can never ride this motorcycle in China because it's by the time I, when I ship it back, it will be too old and and it would it would not be legal. But I just want to like you know have it with. Her. <laughs> that's that's have awesome. With I, I hope you can get it back because that's those. I'm sure. Those stories, um, you know, I've ridden my bike here, not nearly as much as you have with yours, and you really do develop that bond. Um, it's it's pretty pretty awesome. So, dude, I'm I'm super happy that you found time to to come on here and, and that we were able to coordinate this. So, well, thanks for uh, thanks for know, coming I'm, on I'm the channel. I appreciate I appreciate like you reach me out. So, uh, Wei Dong, thank you very much for coming on the channel. I am again. It was a fantastic conversation. 
so many layers to, to peel back uh, as far as as he goes. And um, really, just again, a class act, and 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 super proud to have him on the channel. Thank you very much for coordinating that with me. So, guys, if this is your first time tuning in, again, please click that subscribe button down below. Remember, likes go a long way to help support the channel. I'll see you guys next time.